What is up everyone? So I know it's been quite a while since I made a hard body video, but today we have a pretty cool video going on. In today's video, I'm gonna be attempting to make some side skirts for the hard body. Now back in the 80s and 90s when these trucks were popular, not that they're not popular anymore, but when they were at their prime, there was body kits that you can buy. You would um, kind of put them on your front valence and bolt them up, mold them, I guess, to the side and they had little rear pieces right here, and it was the style. But obviously those companies have gone out of style and it's really, really hard to find a set of fiberglass body kit, I guess I should say, um, in mint condition. And I have found a few sets. The only issue is with how low my truck is, I would destroy those side skirts and it would hurt me and I'm sure other people would be a little upset that I'm destroying some rare side skirts. So I opted to try this method with the rain gutters. These things are four bucks each, they're 10 foot sections and if I happen to destroy it or it falls off, then I just go to Home Depot or Lowe's, pick up a new one and modify it to fit. I know it sounds kind of hack and it definitely is hack, but I'm gonna try my best to make it look legit that way you don't no, it's a rain gutter. Side, I'm going to measure from the beginning of the wheel arch right here to the front fender. And I'm probably gonna add about an inch on each side. That way I have some wiggle room. I ended up cutting the piece of scrap that I had. You can see it's a very rough cut, but I just wanted to cut that double lip off. I am gonna make it a lot cleaner. And just judging from the looks, I'm probably gonna have to make it a little bit shorter, but I just wanna test it and what it's gonna look like. I was debating doing it this way or flipped, but I think I'm leaning more towards this because of the fact that the other way, in my opinion, just looks a, a little weird and it kind of looks like a rain gutter. And it's not that I'm not trying to make it look like a rain gutter, I'm just trying to not make it look as like hack. I want it to look somewhat decent. Um, so I think it looks good. The only issue is that I think I want it to sit in more which once again is not an issue. The reason it's not in that much, you can see there's a bit of a gap. By the gap, I mean this gap right here. So I do want it to stick out quite a bit, but as you can see, I want it to sit inside the door jam like so, if it focuses. That way I can throw some self tappers or something in here to help me fasten it. So right here you can see it's hitting, and over here I could shorten that up and get it to squeeze up a little bit more. But I also have to take into consideration the bedside that's gonna bulge out. So if I push this in too much, then out here, I'm gonna to have to cut into this flat surface over here. So if I were to put this, let's say here, I would need to cut all the way to the edge right here. And then whatever I can't cut over here would have to be about an inch. That way it flows it doesn't make too much sense right now, but once I throw it on, um, it should make a little bit more sense. Uh, now I'm just gonna cut the top off of the longer piece and uh, throw it on and see what it looks like. I made my cut line about an inch and a half from the outside in, so that's where I'm gonna cut. And uh, I made it a little long with the intentions that I'll still have some material to trim away if I wanna push it in more. I just have it mocked up with some masking tape but you can see overall what the design is gonna look like. Now, it is a little too far pushed out right now, but the reason it's like that is because I did the inch and a half cut all the way across, so it's pretty much impossible for that piece right there on the door jam to fall in when it's hitting out here. So what I'm gonna have to do is, right where the door stops, probably about an inch in, I'm gonna cut back a little bit, and then same with the fender cut back in this way, uh, maybe half inch, maybe inch. That way it can push in and this little lip that you're seeing will sit inside the door jam. Now, I also have to throw on the bedside because like I said, right now, it's not sitting on the lip, but I had it set up on the lip. The tape isn't really strong, that's gonna fall. But it starts off here and it comes out. So what my theory is, Right here, I'm probably not gonna cut anything, but back here, it's gonna be cut all the way to this face. So from here, it's gonna get cut across all the way to here in an angled cut like that, 
and that way it'll flow with the shape of the bedside. For example, I'll show you this side. So right here you can see that the bedside comes out. So it'll flow right here, it'll start the cut, and then over here it should be cut up all the way to the face and the face should sit like this and then just kinda flow something like that. The way I'm gonna determine this cut right here is I have it mocked up where it needs to be. I got the tape measure out and in order for this to touch against right there, it's roughly, I'm just gonna say, an inch and an eighth. And I have an inch and an eighth over here. So that is perfect. That means I could trim this all the way until it's flat. And if I do go all the way until it's flat and trim it, so if it's nice and tight here, it should be nice and tight here as well. That way it'll be flat this way and it won't have this huge gap right there because that gap just looks kind of a little funky. Now another thing I could do is leave it the way it is and let's just say I, I wanted to redo this. I could cut less, so instead of cutting that inch and a half, I could cut inch and a half over there, over here, and then right here, whatever this is, I can cut it like this. So it's touching on all the surfaces and there is no gap, but it flows like this, if that makes sense. That's another option as well, if you guys wanted to go with that route. Over here on the back, you could see that I cut, that way it would clear the widened bedside. So I still have a slight gap right here that I'm trimming away in order to close that gap. Uh, but you can see over here, it's hitting where these dots are. So what these dots are, that's just uh, where I'm going to be shaving down in order for the side strip to go in more, meaning it'll close that gap a little better and give me more surface area inside the door. So I'll show you with the door open how it looks. Over there we're going to put the fender, and there you go. You can see how it looks in here. So obviously, I'm going to have to trim around all this. But you can see where it's gonna bolt up is gonna be right there. So it'll just sit on top of that. I got this side pretty much done the same way I did this one. I just didn't really record it because it's the same process. But now all I have to do is trim it in order to fit a little tighter. So you can see there is a very slight gap. Overall, they're looking pretty good. And the best thing is I could always add on to them and extend them and make them look lower or just modify them in general. That, and they're only four bucks each, so it's pretty much a win-win situation. I'm gonna try to cut down this line and get the heat gun and roll this over, one, so it doesn't look like a rain gutter from the side like this, and then two, to help it from sagging. So if you can see, it's not wanting to stay on the lip, obviously because there is no more lip on this because I cut it off. If I had a lip on there, I'm sure it would hold a little bit better, kind of like over here, but uh, I feel like if I bend this in, do two fasteners, one on the top, one on the bottom, it should keep it from being able to rock like this. Um, that's the plan at least, so I'm going to quickly cut that with the scissors and try to use the heat gun to bend it. I just used some zip ties just to kind of get an idea if it was going to work or not. But it looks pretty good. Um, before, you could see that it was rotating kind of like that. Now it's good to go. Now all I have to do is trim all this excess. So that way you don't see it. And then two, it looks a lot better having this nice rounded edge than having it kind of be just cut off like this. So I traced the edge right here with some sandpaper. I made a little template. It's pretty rough. But now with this, I'm going to get a piece of this extra that I have right here and kind of trace it on here on the flat side as much as I can and cut that out and then I got some JB Weld right here. So with this, I should be able to get the same material on the side, it's, like I said, very rough cut, but I should be able to cover up the sides like that. And uh, it'll look weird right now since it's gonna have some JB Weld in there and all that, but once it's sanded smooth and painted the same color as the truck, once I get the truck painted, then it'll look legit, at least I hope it should. But um, this is how I'm making the end caps with just literally tracing it with a piece of paper. I got the end cap pretty much in there. It still needs to be JB welded in place, but they serve two reasons. One, for the looks or the aesthetics, that way it doesn't look like a rain gutter from the side. And two, it'll help me bolt it up to the fender and also push it out. So if you guys remember when I did that little piece back there, it pushed that out, but it pushed this in. So I have this same lip right here that goes all the way down but I had nothing attached it to. So now that I have this little end cap, once it's JB welded here, I'll be able to push it back like this and drill some holes in here 
and either zip tie it or self tap it in place, whichever. That way it can't go back in like that. So it'll help push it out and it'll give it that flare out a little. So I'm probably gonna JB weld these in place like this. That way I know the depth and then whatever is excess, I'll just cut that off with the cutoff wheel and then I'll try and sand it down that way it looks smooth. Rather than trying to cut it and make it look nice and then put this on there and possibly get it crooked like this or like that. So I'll probably just do that right now and then I'll JB weld it in place. I got this little piece down here, JB welded. I know it looks pretty rough, uh, but now I'm gonna test fit it one more time, drill some holes. And the way I'm gonna drill some holes is, I'm gonna obviously take this wheel off. I don't think I need to film this, but I'm just gonna explain what I'm gonna do. Um, and push it out like this, the way I want it. That way it doesn't go under and it pushes it flat. Um, there's a tiny lip right here. So what I'm gonna do is be very careful, drill some holes, maybe do some zip ties. And then now all of this, it's gonna be in the way, so not in the way, just unnecessary. So I'm gonna trim this down, and then once I trim that, I'll just come in here and cut all this off. Like I said, I doubt you guys need to see this, but that's pretty much the process. So here are the side skirts all installed and ready to go. I have two zip ties on the back. I have two self tappers right here, and then I have one uh, zip tie over here with that piece that I JB welded. Now I just need to make some time and paint the whole truck. As you can see, it's all sanded down and I'm getting uh, prepped for paint. I know there's going to be a few people who aren't going to like this idea and they're going to say that it's wrong or that it's stupid, which is completely fine. But for those of you who enjoyed it and liked it, you guys uh, feel free to do this and try it on your trucks. Maybe you guys could even do it the opposite way. Now I'm sure some legit side skirts would look a lot better than these, but then again, these were four bucks each. So a total of not even 10 bucks and you pretty much got your set of side skirts, which I think isn't bad at all. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, guys.